Hey there, comic book fans. I am back from my trip to the comic shop today. Oh, it's a low energy day for me. I was up too early this morning. But anyway, I got 10 comics. Uh, nine were in my pull list and one I pulled off the shelf. Another big week for me. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think my pull list is going to fall off a cliff this summer, though, because a lot of the comics I've been getting are four, five, six issue miniseries that are in the middle of or near the end of them now. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see how long this lasts. But here is the my museum cover of the week that I keep on the top of my printer, Tarzan number three. I think this is the late seventies. And when I first picked this up and looked at it, I was like, "That's a John Buscema cover," but I didn't know who was inking them. Like whoever's inking them is very strong inker, and it's Dave Cockrum. This is Dave Cockrum over John Buscema and. Uh, I was like, I, I could tell it was John Buscema by the faces and some of the musculature, but, and I was like, it's almost like, it's like some of this inking over here was almost like Ernie Chan, but not really, because Ernie Chan is kind of even more overpowering an in inker. You can usually recognize him. But no, it's Dave Cockrum inking that issue of Tarzan. Uh, what year? Did, I think this came out 78, 79. I'm pretty sure I bought, this is one I, I bought off the, uh, off the racks way back then and still have. I didn't collect Tarzan regularly, but I bought some issues here and there, I remember. Then we got the comic shop news, which is funny because I picked it up this way and I thought that was uh, Namer of the Submariner, but it's not. It's the Mighty Crusaders, the Shield. It's a Rob Liefeld cover. I guess they're doing a relaunch of The Shield. Who's publishing this? Liefeld's Crusade begins at Archie. So I guess Archie comment. Yeah, I guess Archie does own The Shield, don't they? So I guess Archie's reviving some of their superhero lines. Then we've got other stuff in here. Is that a Staranto one? Staranto Nick Fury. I already have that one. The bit. I don't think I ever made a video of it. I'm going to have to. That was before I was making uh, the video. Yeah. Staranko's Nick Fury, Agent of Seared, Artisan Edition. I have I have the big one back there. Uh, the Artist Edition. I think it's over in there somewhere. But I, I don't to make a video of that because I don't think I ever did. It was before I was making... I got that one before I started making videos of all the Artist Editions I could. But let's look at the one I pulled off the shelf. Murder Hobo. <laughs> um... Just goofy fun from goof looked like goofy fun. Schmalky and Lynch's murder hobo. Looked like goofy fun, so I figured I'd give it a try. I think it's got like four different stories in here by different artists and things. And it's all this just, you know, high energy, cartoony, violent murder hobo art. There's some nice gore for you. So like, I had nine. For some reason, I thought ten was better. Even though I've got a couple of expensive comics here, so I really didn't need to add a uh, tenth. Matter of fact, I think these... Last week, my ten... Com I got a ten percent discount on my pull list, I think it is. And, like, last week, my ten comics cost me $37 and change. And this week, my... 10 comics cost me $42, which is high for me. Usually I, I spend about $20 a week on comics, but like I said, I've had a lot of stuff on my pull list lately. Usagi Jimbo number 18, always on my pull list. This is not going to fall off. Matter of fact, with this in the reprint, I have two Usagis on my pull list now. Um, so this is always fun. This is the, oh, they're fighting, this is the story where they're fighting these, um, sort of werewolf mystical monsters Usagi and one of his old masters oh and he's teaming up with these flying crow guys who are um what are they called uh, the, the they're sort of the the folk monsters of Japan oh I can't remember their name oh well but he's teaming up with some of them and they kind of resent him because he's just a mere human then we've got what the picture of everything else number three this is another series. I have no idea how long it's going to last. I assume it's a mini series, but I haven't actually seen. The Paris Ripper, the artist of deadly paintings, has completed his masterwork and the city stands poised to change forever. But he's about to be confronted with what every artist truly fears a critic who knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Cover by. 
some name I can't read in this really small font down there. But yeah, this one's fun. It's about uh, I think in last issue, our our Paris Ripper got these myth who could paint people and they die. Painted this big dome over Paris in a painting. At the end of last issue, sort of this the sky turned red in over Paris, and I think it was making the big dome. So we'll have to see what happens this issue. But it also takes place at the turn in the late 1900s, early early 20th century. I can't remember which, but. A hundred years ago, it takes place. Maybe one hundred twenty years ago. Who knows? Uh, I think it was it. I think it's before World War One. And then we've got uh, Julia March's Carmen. Really liked the first issue of this, as did a lot of other people. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's what the second issue is all about. Um, fun stuff. I think that this is a six issue series, but we're only on issue two, so this should last me all summer. Really like the first issue. Uh, the, this woman in the skeleton is is an angel of death or something. And it, like the first issue was all about her picking up this woman who had died and bringing her to where the ever uh, other afterlife, where, whatever the afterlife is. I guess, I guess that's what she's doing. But it was she was having fun with it. She was trying to cheer the woman up, having fun. They were trying out flying and all sorts of fun, fun stuff. It was it was a it was an interesting issue. I really liked it. Then we've got Homesick Pilots. Once again, another one I have no idea if it's ongoing or a mini. Issue 5. Waters, Wingard, Bidikar, and Muller. Um, Casper Wingard is the reason I bought this. I liked, it. I liked his art on um, that Peter Cannon series that I enjoyed. Nuclear Bastards. I think they're the dead ones. R.I.P. Classified. About a punk band who... A haunted house takes over a punk band, and now they have to go on missions for it, and all sorts of weird things happen. There's a weird thing happening right there with that. That's one of the ghosts who's haunting a VCR tape and has superpowers when he haunts a VCR tape. So I've been enjoying this one a lot. Um, what else do we have? Oh, this, this is, I think, this is the first time this is back in a while. Grendel, Devil's Odyssey, issue 5 of 8. It's, um... This is Grendel Prime. I guess he was like the last Grendel many, many years in the future, sort of sci-fi-y. And he's out in a spaceship looking for a home for his people. His people are being driven off their home planets. I can't remember for some reason. So he's out there in space with his little robot companion looking for a home planet. And he's got all sorts of superpowers, but still he gets in trouble. Still, there's a lot of people. It looks like look, look like a lot of uh, double page spreads in this issue. A lot of full full body shots of Grendel Prime too. So, Matt Wagner. I generally enjoy Matt Wagner, so I'm picking that one up. But the next one we've got is Serial Number Three. Terry Moore's Serial. Once again, always enjoy Terry Moore stuff. And there's the little girl who's not really a little girl. She's a th- thousands year old demon and she's hunting down a serial killer right now she's, she's been one of the regular characters since um rachel rising i think you know what it's always fun terry moore stuff is always good i just i think last week i had a video up where i where i completed the last few issues i didn't have of his strangers in paradise uh so i've been buying his stuff since the 90s whatever he puts out and i enjoy it what do we have next? Birthright, issue 48. Not the last issue of Birthright. A lot of these image books have done, since they do 12-issue hardcovers, have ended at issue 48. But this one's ending at issue 50. There's one of the heroes of our story. Oh, there he is, fighting his brother. So th- this whole, the whole big main story wrapped up with the last story arc. Now this last story arc is about these two brothers trying to move on with their lives. But the one brother who spent many years in this magical world is older than his older brother. And the older brother just learned magic on the magical world. And it's kind of corrupting him a little somehow. So now they're both on Earth trying to clean things up after this magical war. I guess that's them as kids. And get things under control. There he is in his magic form. So it's been an interesting, you rarely get a like story arc after the big war ends. 
So I'm finding that very interesting. Uh, and here's one I picked up. This is one of the expensive ones. This was six ninety nine. Ouch! But it's thick. It's thick. It's not the size of a normal comic. Whoops! See how many pages that I feels like a forty page package. Um, lock and key and Sandman. I am not a S Sandman universe. Lock and key. Helen gone. I'm not a huge Sandman fan, but I like Lock and Key, so I figured... And I was buying Lock and Key originally in the hardcover collected editions, because I started in the middle. Uh, but I think with the last series... And then I just missed... after. I think there's... What is there up there on my shelf? There's six volumes of Lock and Key, and then it ended. But then they started putting out Lock and Key miniseries, which I was like, oh, I'll pick those up someday in the hardcover editions, and I just never did. And then I, so I think I'm missing like three lock and key miniseries that are in different time periods rather than the, what the main story was. So with the last the last lock and key, I was like, you know what, I may as well pick up the comics because it looks like because I was never bothering to pick up the collected editions. So I got the last one, and now I'm. I said, you know what, I may as well put this one on my pull list too. I think it's two or three issues. I can't remember, and it's by the same guys. I think. Um, Joe Hill is the writer. Gabriel Rodriguez is the artist. Um, photos and Lee, I guess they do the colors and the uh, lettering. Let's see, where are the credits? I guess those, well, those are the cover credits, so I, I'm guessing those are the guys. Oh, it looks like, looks like there's a fair amount of ad pages back here. Let's see, where's the story actually end? All right, so maybe this isn't that big a bargain because... There's our story pages and there's our ad. There's a there's there's a good ten pages. Let's let me see how many ad pages are in this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That makes sixteen ad pages in the back. Hmm. But anyway, lock and key. Maybe I should have waited for trade on that one. Huh? And then the other expensive one I got is. Tankers issue number one from Bad Idea, who I've been doing some production work for, so I just got ENIAC number three in Walesville and Rocks and Minerals off to the printer yesterday, so they'll be out on time. But um, I think this is a giant robot, com or one of those Gundam comics where guys wear suits. And this one was $6, but I think it's 40 pages. I saw Abraham Lincoln in there. Oh, I get there, there must be two stories. Oh, Tankers, one of three this is, too. So there's going to be three issues of Tankers. There's that guy. There's the sort of underground comics, bad idea art on the back. What's this backup? A lot of the bad ideas have had David Lapham backup stories in them, which I've really enjoyed, a black and white one. This one has Robert Vendetti and Jorge... Mon logo backup story and the rest of that looks like they're Gundams fighting dinosaurs all right I'll take it <laughs> so there's tankers number one of three now let me show you a little of my heart what I had going on here here's the one I was working on this weekend and it's got lots and lots of black lines in it let me pull off my drawing clip that's holding it up I this one took me a long time to work all these textures in. Well, we've got a few figures. There's one of my mod men. I call them mod men. They're sort of a, with that design on them. Those figures I draw. Got a couple of faces. There's some uh, some brushwork, some busted brushwork. There's some. Um, pen work where I lift up the pen to leave gaps in the line the, all these line, all these sort of jagged lines down here were made with the side of the brush I used I, I, I used every sort of pattern I have in my uh, ink making arsenal my, my, my ink pattern making arsenal on this one there was just so many got that dark inky water back there those strange pointy buildings or whatever they are. Lots and lots of weird stuff in this. I enjoyed doing this one because my the ones I've been doing lately are sort of portrait types. And this one I got to work some people and textures and shapes and 
backgrounds and all sorts of stuff in. So there you go. Showed you some comics, showed you some art, and you guys have a good week out there.